More COVID deaths reported. The Rand Memorial receives a facelift and a former hotel worker finds a silver lining in the pandemic. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leah Cooper with your JCN News for this Friday, April 9th. COVID-19 related deaths here in the country at 196 as the Ministry of Health and its latest update confirmed two unfortunate COVID-19 deaths. Health officials confirming that a 91 year old male of Grand Bahama on Tuesday April 20th died and a 37 year old female of New Providence died on Wednesday, April 21st. Health officials also confirming that three additional deaths were also reported on Thursday, increasing deaths under investigation to 29. Meantime, 50 additional new cases of COVID-19 confirmed in the Bahamas for Thursday, April 23rd. For the fourth consecutive day, New Providence with the bulk of the cases. The Ministry of Health confirming 41 of those new cases confirmed here in the capital. Five confirmed on Grand Bahama, three on Exum and one on the Berry Islands. These cases push the total confirmed cases since March 2020 to 9,976. Two of the cases confirmed on New Providence and one on Grand Bahama has a history of travel within 14 days. A further breakdown of the cases shows an even split in gender, 25 male, 25 females. Active cases now stand at 492, 49 of them hospitalized, 45 moderately ill and four in the intensive care unit. To date, 84,094 tests have been completed and with 57 recoveries yesterday, Recovered cases tally at 9,215. Two government agencies are closed for cleaning following a positive case of COVID-19 in each of the offices. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, as well as the Postmaster General, advising that respective agencies confirmed at least one staff member has tested positive for coronavirus. Foreign Affairs officials say the Consular Division at Charlotte House, Shirley Street, will be closed today to undergo cleaning and full COVID mitigation protocols in accordance with the Ministry of Health guidelines have been implemented. The office will reopen on Monday, April 26 at 9 a.m. Meantime, the Postmaster General advising that the parcel post section of the General Post Office at the Town Center Mall will be closed for two weeks out of an abundance of caution. The entire section will be closed to allow the staff to quarantine. Both agencies apologize for any inconvenience caused. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, it was a joyous day for Grand Bahamians after the Rand Memorial Hospital was severely damaged as a result of Category 5 Hurricane Dorian devastating that island in 2019. Today, the renovated hospital was officially recommissioned. While only sections of the hospital will be opening, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, who was present for the recommissioning, says that this is only the beginning. What you will see during our tour of the hospital complex is only the first phase. Today we commissioned the pharmacy, the Lula Knowles Pediatric Ward, the Maternal and Child Health Block, the Medical Surgical Block, the Critical Care Block, Operating Theatre, the Chapel, Healing Garden, and Medical and Surgical Ward number three. What you see here represents the indomitable spirit of grand bohemians and the tireless efforts of health planners, health executives, skilled laborers, tradesmen, and dedicated health workers. Some $21 million has been allocated for the restoration of the Rand Memorial Hospital by the government. Here's the Prime Minister on what's next, what's the next phase, rather, of development. For the next phase of the redevelopment of the Rand, the Cabinet granted the Public Hospital Authority approval to engage an architectural firm to develop detailed architectural and engineering plans for a new climate resilient hospital and clinic facility for Grand Bahama and the Northern Bahamas with the requisite fund. This will shortly result in the award of a contract for the construction of a four level tower that will allow for inpatient services to be removed from the ground floor level to the second, third and fourth story level. 
Last year, August, Minister of Health Renward Wells noted that the restoration of the Ram Memorial Hospital is split into three parts that got underway on April 29th, 2020. This is inclusive of the COVID-19 program, which incorporates the COVID-19 Infectious Disease Unit, the Cancer Association Project, and the completion of the Kitchen Cafeteria. The government of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas remains firm in its resolve to ensure that the health hazards and hazardous conditions that unregulated communities foster are dealt with decisively and effectively. And with that comes the demolition of 45 incomplete and unoccupied structures in the shanty town known as the farm near Treasure Key, Abaco. The Ministry of Public Works demolished those structures on Thursday morning, just two weeks after the area was raided. Illegal migrants were arrested and items seized. Minister of Public Works Desmond Bannister says police, immigration, officials and other authorities began the second phase of the operation in that area. Uh, these are structures uh, that are dangerous. They can cause persons to lose their lives and the way they are being built, they can cause serious health challenges in this island. I think you all have seen some of the things that have been used for Cespit. The water for those things, as the, the link at home also advised me, ending up in our water table and contaminate our water table, uh, which is which are, in this area, I understand, is very, very high. Uh, and it's very poor, it's probably the health of people in the Africa. Structures we've looked at, not one of them has a foundation in the ground to create what uh, to create the kind of stability that you can be assured that people will be safe in them. Now in 2018, the government announced that shanty towns would be demolished. However, through a court injunction, they were barred and there are some structures that authorities cannot demolish in the farm because of that court injunction. The building control department uh, has to one for it and all of those buildings. Uh, they have marred those buildings appropriately. Uh, they know that for now they can't touch those buildings, so those buildings will remain and stay there. But those buildings also are very dangerous. Uh, when you look at what they have for septic arrangements, they are there is a human waste that's going into your water table in those buildings. Uh, that's a serious challenge for your health and the health of your children and your family. Uh, first. The buildings themselves don't meet any of the standards we require uh, for uh, building regulation and so they too are going to be in serious jeopardy if we are the Meantime, while some acknowledge that the properties they lived on were not acquired in the right way, having the proper permits to build, they are still seeking to have a dialogue with the government. To that, the minister says this. Yeah, I am assured that persons who First of all, who have regular standing in the Bahamas and, and who want to be able to live in reasonable conditions uh, can make appropriate representation and seek accommodation. But what we see here is a blatant disregard to Bahamian law. It's a blatant disregard for health standards in our country. And if it continues, uh, we're going to soon have just thousands and thousands of people out here in an unregulated state that is going to threaten the health of every single person on this island. Uh, that is something that uh, we can't uh, commit to the baby. A joint operation with the Ministry of Works, the Royal Bahamas Police Force and Defense Forces, Bahamas Customs Department, the Department of Immigration, Bahamas Power and Light, and other private sector partners was carried out some two weeks ago. Illegal immigrants and other persons who were suspected of being involved in various criminal offenses were arrested and authorities seized suspected stolen goods. There was also the disconnection of a large quantity of illegally operated generators and gas tanks. Ministry of Works officials say the debris from this structure or these structures rather demolished on a Thursday are being safely disposed of. You're watching JCN News. Stay with us.